Alright, first and foremost, I don't want to say call halal Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. That's all praise to the Most High God in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And this is Shatar Yajidaya, Officer Yajidaya from the Dallas camp. And basically, I want to go into some scriptures. But for the most part, this is going to be a reaction video to a scoffer in the uh, comment section on this video that my, uh, like the other officer did in Dallas, Texas, right? Power, powerful officer, Taza Doc, brilliantly brought out the scriptures about the true baptism, which touched on the Great Commission, right? So, in typical Christian fashion, a Christian had to come on there and get on the all nations part. See, it said all nations. So let's 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 read this comment and let's just let's just dissect it, right? I'm not going to read all of it because it's a lot. Christians can't ever just get specifically to the point ever in anything. Let's see right here. So look, this is I, I, this is it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> So let's go ahead. I'm just going to hit me main parts to see. Basically, he's talking about Tazadot going into the Great Commission, right? That's Matthew 28, 19. Really, 18 through 20, like, like he has up here. So let's read it. I'm not reading it in whatever translation he has that in. This is Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20. And Yahawashai came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the, and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I, I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world, Amon. Okay, right? So Christians, in typical fashion, get hung up. See, it says all nations. Like we, have, we even had... We even had a woman come up to us yesterday before camp coming up with the teach all nations part, which is it's 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 dumb. It's a dumb it's a dumb notion to believe that he was talking to all nations, considering who is the covenants for, who did Christ even come for, who are the promises for, just like it says in Romans not, right? So it's 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 purely idiotic to believe that this is talking about all nations. So let's go, let's go and just, just, let's just go ahead and just knock that out automatically. Romans chapter 9. Romans 9 verse 3, I'm going to read to 6. Let's see, this is Romans chapter 9 verse 3. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. That means the actual bloodline descendancy. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption, Right? The adoption. No, I'm going to read the whole thing and I'm going to jump to each point. To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. So, right, this all pertains to Israel. This doesn't pertain to anybody else. Let's go to the, matter of fact, yeah, yeah, let's go to the adoption. To cut that up real fast. This is Galatians 4 verse, why is this in the common English Bible? Galatians 4 verse 4 through 5. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law. Christ came to die for the people who were under the law. Who was under the law, statutes, and commandments? Israel. We don't have to go anywhere to prove that. It's just common knowledge. As a matter of fact, we'll prove it after this. To redeem them that were under the law, that we, proving that the Galatians are Israelites, that we might receive the adoption of sons. That's how you prove that the Galatians were Israelites. They said that we may receive the adoption of sons. Who is the adoption for? Verse 4, who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption. Proving that the Galatians were Israelites. That's why we had to go to other nations, I mean go... Uh, yeah, we had to go to other nations to go baptize our people because they were in other nations. That's the whole purpose. That's the whole purpose of Matthew chapter 28. But let's prove this talking about Israel. Israel is under the law. Right? 
Psalms 147. We're just going to keep it basic. We're going to just knock this out on all, on all, from all, from all angles, man. This is Psalm chapter 147, verse 19 through 20. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes, and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. As for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye Yahweh. And praise Yahweh he hasn't given to all, all the other nations. Because he only gave them to us. Because we're a special people above all other nations. So we were under the law. He came to redeem us. So the adoption is out. Let's go back to Romans. Let's go back to Romans 4. I mean, Romans 9 verse 4. Who are Israelites retain of the glory going into the kingdom and the covenants. The old and the new. Nobody's going to debate who was under the old covenant. So who was under the new covenant, man? This is all scriptures I brought out plenty of times before. But we're just going to bring it back out just to, just to make a big point, right? This is Hebrews. Because I can put it in Jeremiah. But let's just go to Hebrews. 8 verse, let's go to 10. This is Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8 through 10. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Exclusion for the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. That's it. That's who the new covenant is for. Back to Romans 9, verse 4. Who are Israelites have retained of the adoption already proved. That's for people who are under the law, statutes, and commandments. That's Israel and the glory and the covenants, the old and the new. It's for Israel and the giving of the law, which was proved when I, when I went to the adoption part. And the service of God and the promises. So watch this. Back in the new covenant, right? To prove that this is talking about Israel even farther. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the... In the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, proving that's the actual Israelites, because that's who that's talking about. The actual Israelites. Referring back to something that happened in their history. Because they continue not in my covenant and I and they that they continue not in my covenant. Who was in that covenant? Israel. They continue not in my covenant and I regarded them not save Yahweh. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh. I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. In the new covenant, when we get the new covenant, because we're not under the new covenant, I'll, he said he's going to put his, he's going to put the most, most high is going to put his laws in our mind, in our inward parts. So we don't so we don't have the choice to go off anymore. That's what the new covenant is for. And it's specifically for Israel. And let's let's further prove this, not talking about everybody. Let's get a future prophecy. I love pairing this up. Because this proves this proves who's Christ as this proves who Christ's death is for, right? Isaiah chapter two, verse two uh, through five. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. We know that that hasn't happened yet. Israel isn't established over, over all the other nations. This hasn't happened yet. And shall be exalted above the hills, like I said before. And all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the, to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways. Why are they being taught? Let's go back, right? Let's go back. Matter of fact, I think I needed, I think I needed verse, hold up, verse 11. And here's the point. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor. So everybody under the new covenant shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, No, Yahweh, for all shall know me. From the least to the greatest. So everybody under this new covenant, which is Israel and Judah. When Israel got split up into two nations, they got split up into the house of Judah and the house of Israel. So this new covenant is going to be the rest, the restoration of them and them being changed to have perfect bodies that they don't have to learn the scriptures anymore. And they don't have the ability to go off anymore. 
So they're going to be under this new covenant and they won't have to teach anybody. So when you look in the future, if you look in a future prophecy, let's go back to Isaiah chapter 2. Right? Verse 3. And many people shall go, shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways that many people is the other nations because they're not going to be under the new covenant because if you're under the new covenant you don't have to be taught so obviously they don't have the new covenant obviously man and we will walk in his paths for out of zion shall go forth the law and the word of yahweh from jerusalem because we will teach the other nations because they won't be under the new covenant and watch this I love pairing this up, right? This is Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. And for this cause that he is the mediator of the New Testament, which is interchangeable with covenant. Who is that he that's talking about Christ or Yahweh Shai? He is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament or the first, co the first uh, covenant. Who was under that? Israel. They that they the Slakia, they which are called might receive the promise of internal inheritance. Who are the promises for? Israel. So Christ's death is for the new covenant. And who is under the new covenant? The house of Israel and the house of Judah. Or who will be under the new covenant? The house of Israel, the house of Judah. Right? So if we're going to, that's pretty much the point that's been made on there, right? So if we go back to Matthew chapter 28, verse uh, 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations. So what if, what am I going to teach the other nations if Christ's death isn't for them? If the covenant isn't for them, the law isn't for them, the service of God isn't for them, the promises isn't for them. What's going to be taught to them? That doesn't make any sense. Why you want to say we contradict the Bible? That doesn't make any sense. What are we going to teach the other nation? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. That It doesn't make any sense that this would literally be all nationalities. When, when Christ's death doesn't apply to all nationalities, the covenant doesn't apply to all nationalities. The giving of the law we proved in Psalms 147, the service of God, obviously, the Levitical priesthood, and the, the promises doesn't apply to them. What are we going to teach them? That doesn't make any sense, man. None whatsoever. Verse, verse 5 to seal it. Whose are the fathers as concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all God blessed forever. Concerning the flesh who Christ came for. The bloodline. Obviously, right? And let me go ahead and get this. I know, I know he's going to be ready. I know uh, the Christians are going to be ready in the comment section, right? Verse 24. Even us whom he have called, not the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Because I see they're going to come with that. Also of the Gentiles. Who are these Gentiles? As he saith in O.C., which is Hosea chapter 1, I will call my people, which were not, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, ye shall be called the children of the living God. Okay, let's see what he's quoting right there. That's Hosea, right? Which is Hosea. Let's go chapter 10, verse, I think it's just, what? let me see. I guess not 12, I'm tripping. Yeah, this is what he's quoting. Yet the, yet the number of the children of Israel... The children of Israel, context, the children of Israel, because want, he wants to make a big deal about context. The children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. The same thing. Let's go back just to prove it. it, it, it and it shall come to pass that in the place where it said unto unto them who's the them the children of israel where is that let's see said unto them ye are not my people there shall they be called the children of the living god 
that in the place where it was said unto them the same thing, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. Then shall the, then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel, going back into the new covenant again, us being unified again and being changed, uh, be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, that's Christ. And they shall come up out of the land, the salvation, for great shall be the day of Jezreel, man. That's who this is talking about. That's what that's what that's what the whole Bible is about. Israel. We proved it with this chapter alone. Not counting the precepts I already brought out. But it said we shall be gathered out. Of, matter of fact, before I even get, go to that point, let me read the next verse after that. After this, uh, let's see, Romans 9, verse uh, 25. No, that's not what I want. Verse 27. Isaiah, which Isaiah, also crieth concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sands of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Who is that talking about, man? Israel. So these Gentiles are called, these Gentiles are Israelites. Because it said, look, let's prove it again, right? Because in a place where it, said, where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. If they're not, called, if they're not called Israelites, they're called something else. And what is that something else? Another nation. Which is Gentiles. That's why it says, that's why it says verse 14. Even us whom we have called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Because we weren't called Israelites. We were called the Romans. We were called Galatians. We're called Americans. We're called Mexicans. We're called Puerto Ricans. That's what this is talking about. So if all this applies to Israel, if, like I said before, if the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises all apply to Israel, if we go back to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son. Matter of fact, the Son, how are we going to baptize in the name of the Son if the Son didn't die for them? And he's not in the Father, that's talking about the Most High God. If he's not their God, what? why would I be doing this? That doesn't make any sense, man. That makes literally, that makes literally no sense. That contradicts the Bible. Trying to baptize them in the Father's name I thought the father's name. I thought the father. I, I thought the father's name was a terror unto the Gentiles, man. <laughs> I thought. I thought that. I, I thought that was a thing, but we. Con, but but we're contradicting the Bible, though. We're we're contradicting the Bible, right? That doesn't make any sense, man. Teaching them to observe all the things whatsoever I've commanded you. As a matter of fact, what did he command them to do, man? He commanded them to be holy. He commanded them to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Only Israel can keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Only Israel has kept the law, statutes, and commandments. Let's prove that, right? Let's see. 2 Ezra 3, verse 34. Weigh thou therefore our wickedness now in the balance, and theirs also that dwell, that dwell the world. And This is all the other nations. Weigh our wickedness compared to theirs. And so shall thy name be. Shall thy name no, nowhere be found but in Israel? So how am I going to baptize them in the name of the Father? Moving on, verse 35. Or when was it, and or when was it that they which dwell upon the earth have not sinned in thy sight? Or, or what people have so kept thy precepts? What people have so kept thy precepts? Though thou shalt find that Israel by name hath kept thy precepts, but not the heathen. The heathen can't get right, man. That's what that's all it boils down to. The heathen can't get right. He made them crooked. That's just how it is. So why would he why would he turn around and say? Why would he turn around and say, go and, and teach them this? They can't get right. The covenant's in for them. Nothing's for them. It doesn't make any sense that he would be telling, all, we, we, he would be specifically meaning all nations. That's just a foolish thing to say. But we contradict the Bible. That's hilarious, right? 
So let, let's watch this. Let's go into the All Nations part, right? Let's go into the All Nations. Because he made a big stink. He made a big fuss because Tazadok brought out Luke 21 and 24 because he really just wanted to touch on this and get into the baptism. But he made a big deal about us talking about 70 AD and, and Luke 21 verse 24, which is basically just giving credence that our people will be scattered into all the nations. It's not that's not the only precept that proves Israel will be scattered into all nations, man. It's not. Because he wouldn't make a big deal. Well, this happened before. Well, Paul was teaching before before the scattering and all this and that. That doesn't so what, man? Let's 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 just say you can have that. Let me just let you have that. Because watch this. There's plenty of other precepts that show Israel will be scattered into all nations. Also, they will be saved out of all nations. That's why we have to go and baptize them and bring them into the word and bring them into the fold. Dummy, watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse, matter of fact, let's get this, since he wants to beat me down on context, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and see what this is talking about before we even jump there. Christians are fools. Hashtag. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee now we saw that Israel eventually broke the law statutes and commandments we were righteous for a, a slim amount of time and then we broke the law statutes and commandments then the curses befell us now that's the context of what he's reading the, I mean the context of what he's writing right here and everything past this will be the curses so let's go into the curses Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee. He shall do what? He shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there, and there thou shalt observe, thou shalt serve other gods, which neither, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. We will serve other gods. Matter of fact, precept. Precept, right? Because that's how we became Gentiles. That's how we became Gentiles. 1 Corinthians chapter two, uh, 12, verse 2. You know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. That's how we become Gentiles. That's how we become like the other nations. We start worshiping the other gods and forsaking our one true God and his law, statutes, and commandments. But back to the point, right? And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one from the one end of the earth even unto the other. That's all the nations. Another precept, Leviticus twenty six verse thirty three. And I will scatter you among the heathen, all nations, and will draw out a sword after you, and your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. And we see that now. We see what Jerusalem looks like, not what they call Jerusalem, which really ain't even Jerusalem. But if you look at where the actual Jerusalem was, it's laid desolate. Our cities are a waste. So we've been scattered among the heathen, obviously. Tobit chapter 13, verse 3. Confess him before the Gentiles. That's, this is really the perfect precept for this, right? Confess him. That's talking about the Most High God. Confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel, for he hath scattered us among them. That's the whole purpose of, Deut of Matthew chapter 28. Verse 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations because we were scattered among the Gentiles. Cut, man. Hosea chapter 8, verse 8. Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. We're scattered among the Gentiles for a reproach. For a nation not desired, man. That, I, think that's, I think another translation says that. Israel is swallowed up. Now she is among the nation, among the nations, like a, like something no one wants as a reproach. We've been scattered into all nations as a reproach, man. Nobody likes Israel. That's why we have to go to all nations and baptize them. Because you know why? Because the covenants are for them. The promises are for them. Christ's death is for them. The adoption is for them. That's the whole purpose of that. 
Now let's go into us being saved from all nations. Because we that's why we have to go and get and baptize our brethren in all nations, because we are scattered there, so so we shall be saved there. Watch this. Amos 9, verse 9. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations. Bro, this is this is cut, man. Mr. X has been Mr. X out, bro. You've been X'd out. Like you want to say, what was that? What did he say at the end of this? Uh, let's see. He said something. What did he say? Let's see. Once again, he said something about us being bold so like i'm gonna find it where did he put this yeah the timeline presented by the young man in the video severely contradicts the word of our savior i've given five pa passages that demonstrate such to be the case yet in harmony with each other no you haven't i <laughs> i would like to see a response to this by the gentleman in the video or someone from their camp which is happening right now. Hope they will show the same boldness as they do in the videos of, uh, videos on the streets, which I have done, which you have been cut thoroughly by multiple precepts, man. Mr. X has been X'd out, bro. X'd out. Back to this, Amos 9 verse 9. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations like corn is sifted in a seed. Yet... Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth, man. See how this work. You see how all these scriptures work in harmony. But saying, but saying this, but saying Matthew chapter twenty-eight verse nineteen, talking about all nations, doesn't work in harmony, especially with Romans nine. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. Because what we what what we teach them, what is there to teach? More on the salvation of Israel. Jeremiah 32, verse 37. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries, whether I have driven them in mine anger, because we broke the law, statute, and commandments. That's why we got scattered into all nations. Like it says in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. Whether I have driven them in mine anger, and in my fury, and in my great wrath, and I will bring them again into this place, our old land, and I will cause them to dwell safely. Israel, man. Let's go again. Let's let's keep on. Matter of fact, I think I proved my point just in the in the OT scriptures. Uh, let's go on some New Testament, right? Let's go out. Let's see what, cause his big deal was, like I said again, his big deal was Luke chapter twenty one, Luke chapter twenty one. I think I believe twenty four. I think that's what the issue was. Yeah, verse twenty four, right? And making a deal saying, Paul, let me, matter of fact, let me find it before I, yeah, he's basically talking about, basically talking about, he's basically saying they were all preaching before the scattering, so that verse doesn't, that verse doesn't mean that, that it's specifically Israel that it's talking about, which is, is foolish. If you if you bring all the other scriptures into the equation, and basically it, it almost seems like he's saying Israel wasn't scattered before the so-called New Testament was was being written, which is false. So watch this, Deuter uh, not Deuteronomy, John chapter seven verse thirty-five. Then said the Jews among themselves, "Whether will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed?" among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles. So what is he talking about right here? The dispersed among the Gentiles. Let's look at this in another translation, right? This is John chapter seven, verse 35 in the New Living Translation. The Jewish leaders were puzzled by the statement, where is he planning to go? They asked, is he thinking of leaving the country and going to the Jews in other lands? Maybe he will even teach the Greeks? 
Bro, who is that talking about, man? That's Israel. Because we got we got scattered into matter of fact. Let me let me get this in another. There's a better one, right? Let me just prove what that's talking about, right? The Greeks. Second Maccabees. For uh, let's go verse Maccabees chapter one. Let's just get right to chapter one. Let's see. KJV. They said, "Teach them Greeks." Who now? Who are those Greeks? If we know, if we know that the covenants are for Israel and everything's basically for Israel, these Greeks have to be what Israelites. Now let's prove why it said why it says Greeks there. This is more First uh, Maccabees chapter one verse forty one. I think I'm just gonna read down to. I'm just gonna just read. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and everyone should leave his laws so all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king yea many also of the Israelites the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Shabbat and sacrificed unto idols man we worship other gods we become Gentiles who was this king this was a Grecian king so we became like the Greeks this is us becoming Greeks, literally. Let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to keep going. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judea that they should follow the strange laws of the land and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple and, th and that they should profane the Shabbats and festival days and pollute the sanctuary and the holy people. So we basically stopped doing everything in the law. Everything, man. And became like the Grecians. That's what happened. And pollute the sanctuary and the holy people. Set up, uh, let me see. Uh, let, me shift, let me jump to 49. To the end, to the end that they may forget the law and change all the ordinances. And whosoever would not do according to the, the, king, the commandment of the king he said he should die. So that's what happened, man. They made us forget the law, statutes, commandments and do whatever they were doing. That's why we had to go to all nations and teach our people because they forgot who they were, especially in Greece. Or the, well, when the Greeks took over our land, man. Moreover, more of the Greeks taking over our land. They made us forget our law, statutes, and commandments. And leave our children, like it's the verse 48, that they should leave their children uncircumcised and make their, their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and, and profanation. We left our children uncircumcised. And circumcision is a key thing of, be, of being an Israelite or being a, for being a, a descendant of Abraham, man. Because matter of fact, if you didn't, if you didn't, if you weren't circumcised, you had to, uh, you were cut off from the people. Genesis, what is that? Genesis 14, I mean 17, 14, let me see. Yeah. I don't know what this E is. Why is it always in these random translations? Why just can't be KJV? Genesis 17, verse 14. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised that soul shall be cut off from his people he hath broken my covenant if you don't get circumcised you're to be cut off from the people man so you're not an Israelite anymore you know I mean you're literally descend you descend from the 12 tribes of Israel but you're not considered of the people you become like who you become a Gentile man that's a gent that's that's what it was talking about in Hosea chapter 1, verse 10. That's what it was talking about in Romans 9, chapter 24. I mean, Romans chapter 9, verse 24 through 26. That's what that's talking about. We became like the Gentiles. So we were scattered pre... We were scattered pre-New uh, Testament, so-called New Testament. So we were scattered pre-Apocrypha uh, pre times, man. 
Hell, we were scattered in the Old Testament, bro. We, we, we just been scattered the whole time. The whole time, man. Israel's been scattered into all nations. That's why we have to go to all nations, man. Just hammering, we're just hammering this point in. Another one. James 1 verse 1. James, a servant of God and of Adawan, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Adawan being Lord, Hebrew. Yahweh Shai with Jesus and Hamashiach being Christ in the Hebrew. To the 12 tribes which were scattered abroad. Which were what? Scattered abroad. I wonder what it says in the, in the other translations. <laughs> Here we go. The NIV. James, a servant of God unto Adawan, Yahweh Shai. Hamashiach to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. Greetings, man. That's what this is. It's such an obvious thing, man. But you Christians, you want to you want to just love your. And the crazy thing that looks like our, it looks like my people. That's probably our people. I'm, I'm not too sure. I'm not going to click on it. But that's just that's Jake, man. Because I can even make a point, even not talking about him. We had we had a so-called black woman. Probably of the tribe of Judah, come of us trying to save everybody, saying Christ said he came to baptize, baptize everybody from all nations. It's not that you believe that it's all nations; you just want to save your oppressor. That's what this is. That you will cont contort the scriptures, you will sit there and contort the scriptures to try to save your oppressor, man. That's all it is. Because we were on the Chinese man, y'all wouldn't say none. We was on the Japanese man. The East Indian, I won't say nothing. But we say the so-called white man can't be saved according to the scriptures. Now it's all nations. Now here's all these. Here's John three sixteen or whatever, what have you, man. That doesn't make any sense. But we're contradicting the scriptures. Foolishness, man. Absolute foolishness. Then he had the unmitigated goal to get to quote Acts chapter one. Where is that at in there? So I'm just gonna hit some of these because this guy is all over the place with these points because he wanted he, he quoted acts chapter uh one verse four through four through eight i don't know why anybody would ever quote this if you want to say if you want to say this is for everybody because but his main point was but you shall receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in jerusalem and all judea and all samaria until until the end of the earth that's talking about the same thing this is talking about which we prove that it's not for everybody. With plenty of scriptures. That's the whole key point. But I want to chime in on something real fast. I don't know why you would try to would you would try to quote verse six in here, right? This is Acts 1, verse 6. I'm just gonna read it because I already have it up right here. Acts 1, verse 6. And and they therefore were come together, they asked him, they asked Christ, saying, Lord. Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So, the matter of fact, this is hilarious, right? This is how you cut your own damn self. Restore again the the kingdom to Israel. That's the that's the key point right here, man. This is the subject: the restoration of Israel. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father have put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in, in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and until the uttermost part of the earth, right? So that's the same thing as the Great Commission. We have to go and baptize our brethren in, other, in the other nations, right? Who scattered among all the other nations. But the point right here is verse 6. You were an idiot, to quote, you must be an idiot to quote verse 6, man. Because what does this mean? Restore again the kingdom to Israel, right? What does that word kingdom mean in the Hebrew? Watch this. Let's go to the blue letter. See, I mean the Greek. I'm tripping. What does that word mean in the Greek? Let's get an understanding, right? Because you want to say that's talking about everybody, right? Let's get an understanding. Christians with lights work, man. All right, right. Restore again the kingdom. Let's see. I think this. Royal power, kingship, 
dominion, or rulership, man. What is this talking about? What is this talking about? This word means rulership, bro. A kingdom or territory, the territory subject to, to the rule of a king, man. Or the reign of Yahweh Shai, man. The reign of Messiah. It's the same thing, man. Royal power, kingdom, rulership, man. This is ridiculous, bro. Absolutely ridiculous. To restore again the rulership. The rulership. What is that rule? What is that rulership, man? Back to Isaiah chapter 2. What is that rulership? Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2. And it shall <clears throat> and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. That's all that's all the nations of the world being subject to Israel when they're exalted above all nations. That's the restoration of Israel. That's the kingdom being given back to Israel. So why in the world, why in the world would he be saying go to literally to all nations, man? It doesn't make any sense. None whatsoever. That point's been proven. I don't even need to chime in. Let's see what other precepts he got on here. Basically, he's just pulling scripture to say all nations, which doesn't, I mean, that doesn't prove that it's literally for all nations of the people, man. Especially the gospel, right? The gospel isn't for all nations. As a matter of fact, let's prove it. Right? This guy is about to be used for straight edification purposes. Let's go to Luke chapter 4. Let's see what Christ says the gospel is. This is Luke chapter 4, verse 17 through 18. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, which is basically Isaiah. And we're going to prove it. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of Yahweh is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Preach what? The gospel to the poor. So where is he, what is he quoting right here? This is Isaiah chapter 61. Right? Now let's just read that. Let's just read that. The spirit of Yahweh God is upon me because Yahweh have anointed me to preach good tidings. Here in the, in, the, in the OT it says good tidings instead of the gospel, which is the same thing, which is got good news. Good tidings, good news. Unto the meek, he have sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to to slot, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of Yah of Yahweh and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn the day of vengeance who's the vengeance upon the heathen for what they did to Israel an acceptable year of Yahweh because we will be brought and established upon, upon select among all nations that's not select above all nations right verse 3 but let me know, back, back to verse 2. To comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. The gospel for who? Zion. To the, appoint them that mourn in Zion, which is Israel. To give unto them, possessive nouns, beauty for ashes and oil, the oil of joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahweh, that he might be glorified. Who is this for? Israel. And to prove it some more, verse 4, and they shall build, and they shall build the old waste, and they shall, the old waste, what's the old waste? Our cities that, lay, that lie in desolation right now. Build the old, old waste, they shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many just, uh, generations. Key point right here. And the strangers, the other nations, the strangers shall stand and feed your flocks and the sons of the, the, sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. The other nations, 
shall be shall be your plowmen and vine dressers. What is that going into slavery? Into capti captivity, like how we did in America, and how we did in like we did in the basically in the New Testament as well. How we were under the rulership of Rome, and ye Israel. Zion, and ye shall be named the priest of Yahweh. Men, uh, priest of Yahweh, men shall call you the minister. Men shall call you, you Israel, the ministers of God. And ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. Shall ye boast yourselves, Israel? Watch this. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Now I'm just gonna keep going. For your shame, ye shall have double, and for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land shall they, their land, Israel, shall possess the double, everlasting joy shall be unto them. Verse 9, I'm going to skip to verse 9. And their, sheep, and their seed shall be known, Israel's seed, shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people, and that... And that all that see them, like, all that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which Yahweh have blessed. Man, we are the seed which Yahweh have blessed. The bloodline, the bloodline descendancy which Yahweh have blessed. Where are we at? Okay, that's proving literally that the gospel isn't for everybody, man. Literally, there's no like. So go ahead and pull that whatever you, what was that, uh, what was that verse? Yeah, this gospel, well, I guess he's just pulling verses that say the gospel for the, all the other nations. <laughs> the, the gospel of the kingdom, all right, the gospel of rulership, the good news, we just proved that that's for Israel, Isaiah 61. This is just verses, this is how Christians do. This is, what, this is exactly what Christians do, right? They do this right here. They'll go into a site, Probably Bible Gateway, whatever they want to go into, and just type in uh, all nations, all nations, and then they'll just be like, oh, gospel. Oh, must be for everybody. It says, it says gospel, and it says all nations. It's a gospel published among all nations. It must be everybody, man. You see how they do? That's what they do, man. But they don't actually go into the scriptures. They don't go to what the law says. They don't go to what the prophets. They hell, they don't even go to what Christ says, man. And look at all to look at it all together as one. They don't eat the whole scroll, man. So yeah, we have to eat the whole scroll, man. That's not that's what Christians that's what Christians fail to do, man. Let me see where is this at? Where is it that little book from? Let me see. A little book. Um. Yeah, Revelation chapter ten, verse ten. And I took the little book. Was a little book? It's the scriptures, man. The scriptures, all of the scriptures. And I took the little book out of the out of the uh, out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey because it sounds good. It sounds great. The gospel for Israel, we're gonna be a, we're gonna be uh, established above all nations. We're gonna have everything. It's gonna be sweet as honey. It sounds good. But when I had eaten it, in my belly it was bitter because there's certain things about this truth that that aren't that aren't so sweet, man. Like the struggles, the hour of temptation, man, the tribulations. There's certain there's certain things that just it's, it's not so nice that we have to deal with. But we have to deal with it because we have to eat the whole roll. We can't cherry pick scriptures like Christians do, man. We're going to read we're going to read all of it. I'm not about to sit here. I'm not about to sit here and just just type in all nations inside a Bible gateway and then type in gospel and see what I pull up. And so that must mean the gospel's for everybody. We need to read the whole scroll, man. I think that's pretty much it on this. I think he just basically put his scriptures, just knocking on the on the seventy A.D. thing, which is irrelevant. You can have it. 
I mean, I don't agree with it. You can go ahead and have it, though. I mean, I've, I went to play other scriptures. The gospel of all nations part, I mean, it's already, I mean, that's it's, it's, it's cut up, man. There's nowhere you can go, bro. And this one, no, I'm going to end it right here, bro. This, this, this is foolish. This right here is foolish, man. Colossians 1 verse 23, 1 verse 20. Let's read that, bro. I'm, that's the last one I'm going to deal with, man. Christians don't know the Bible, bro. This is Colossians. Uh, I mean, 22 really is kind of irrelevant to the point. No, what was that one? What is that? Is that 21? It said alienated. I think it's 21. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is Colossians chapter 2, verse 21. And you, that were, really, that's really the point, honestly. Oh, no, no, I see every creature. That's what he was trying to do, right? Colossians 1, verse 21. And you, that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now have he reconciled. Who is that talking about? That's obviously talking about Israel, right? Because it says reconciled. What does the word reconcile mean? You dumb Christians, right? Because y'all want to say reconcile. What does reconcile mean? To restore friendly relations between. It, may, it means to bring back. Re. To bring back. Reconcile. Bring back to what was. Who was with the Most High God? Israel, man. To settle. To resolve, man. He's reconciled us, man, through Yahweh Shai's death. That's what Ephesians chapter 2 is going into. He's now reconciled us by his death, which, I mean, the, verse, the next verse says it, in the body of his flesh through, through death to present you, present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. I was talking about Yahweh Shai's death, which was evidently proven for Israel, man. Evidently. Romans chapter 9, verse uh, 5 through 6. Acts chapter 5, verse 31. Romans chapter uh, 8, verse 29. Precept with Isaiah, showing who the elect is. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. What his death was for, for the, for the stuff under the new covenant. Galatians 4, verse 4 through 5. His death was uh, for those who were under the law. This is talking about Israelites. That's why they need to be reconciled, because they were set apart from their God through wicked works. Matter of fact, let me see. Uh, what is that precept, bro? I think it says your sins have se your sins have separated you. Yeah, separated you from your God. This is Isaiah fifty nine verse two. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Your sins have separated between you and your God. That's why we need to be reconciled. Because it says in your mind, right? I'm going to read it again. Colossians 1 verse 21. And you that were, were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works have uh, yet now have he reconciled. That's talking about Israel, right? Because Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2. But your, iniquity, your iniquities have separated between you and your God. That's how we were alienated. And we're alienated by bring cast, being cast out, out of our land for breaking the law, statutes, and commandments. And your sins have hid his face from you because we were enemies to the Most High God when we broke the law, statutes, and commandments. Because what's the love of God? It's keeping his law, statutes, and commandments. 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. Your sins have hid, have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So this is talking about Israel, man. Christ's death is for Israel. Now watch this, verse 23, which even cuts you even farther. If ye yet continue in faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. What's, well, who's, what is the gospel? Who is the gospel for? Isaiah 61, man. Israel. The good news. The good news that, that you will be established over everybody. The good news that Christ's death is for you. He will justify many, man. Isaiah 53. 
Who is that talking about Zion? It's Israel. Isaiah chapter 40, man. All the why is all the God how come every time I go to the prophets, it's talking about the gospel being for Israel, man? Give me let me get Romans. This is Romans 1 verse 2. 1 verse 1. What is Romans 1 verse 1 through 2? Paul, a servant unto Yahweh Shai Mashiach, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, the gospel, which he had promised afore by the prophets in the Holy Scripture. So this gospel existed before Paul. It existed before Christ came upon earth, man. And who was it promised towards? It's promised towards Israel. So how then are you going to try to use scripture like this to say it's talking about everybody, man? Watch this. Which ye have heard, which was preached, uh, preached to every creature of, under heaven. Why would this be talking about everybody, man? If it isn't for everybody. This is for everybody of Israel, man. All the creatures of Israel. Because who is the gospel for? Israel. Who is the covenants for? Israel. Who is Christ's death for? Who is the adoption for? Israel, man. Whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, bro. You're cut. That's, that's, that's the end of it, man. All these scriptures will just say all nations. You just Googled every creature in all nations. You're cut, man. You're cut, bro. There's, 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 you're cut, bro. That's all, that's really all it is, man. What is, what is that last one, right? How are young man? Is a hand of the word of God? Explain the baptism, be water, spirit. That's, that's just foolish. It's just dumb questions, man. Titus 3, verse 9 through 10. Or there are three, I think it's Titus 3 and 10, man. It's just foolish questions. But long story short, is you cut, man. That's it. Thoroughly. So when you say, when you want us to say, I hope you show the same boldness in your videos like we do on the streets, congratulations, man. You got X'd out, man. Mr. X gets me X'd out. And with that, I want to say, call Halal Yahweh by Hashem and Mashiach Yahweh Shai and say, the water for waking us up into this truth so we don't listen to these dumb ass pastors no more. Man. Call Halal for that. We need to thank the Most High God that He brought us up out of Christianity, man. So, you can, so we don't filibuster through scriptures and just Googling all nations and everybody can be saved saying that's for everybody when it is, it's, it's evidently for Israel. Because who was the word even given to in the first place? With that, I want to say Shalom.